Hi, so I don't know, by some miracle, I, attempt, I made a video where I attempted to describe something about a derivative. I think that one wasn't that great. Then I did another video, which actually felt a little bit better, but uh, um, about the chain rule. So I've kind of summarized how the power rule is a way to take a function and compute the derivative by taking the exponent, multiplying it, and subtracting one by the exponent. The chain rule is a way to say if y depends on x and x depends on z, I can look at the relationship between y and z by chaining the two derivatives of this function and this function. So those are the two pieces that I've done so far. The last piece that I need for the gradient descent algorithm is something called a partial derivative. Now I think this is actually going to be somewhat easier to do, to explain, and then you know, hopefully it'll all make sense when we come back and look at the derivation of the linear regression with gradient descent formula. But let's say, what if, you know, in, in many cases you have a function with multiple variables. So I could say I have a function f of x and y, and it equals, you know, 3x squared plus 2xy plus y to the third power plus um, you know, I don't know, 9x uh, squared y. So this is some crazy function that I wrote. I don't know what the use point of it is. But what if what I want to do is look at, and let's say this is uh, z. z is a function of x and y. And what I, what I want to do, and, and by the way, there's, I, I've been struggling with this. You know, if I have a function like f of x, equals x squared. I can, another notation that you might see is this f uh, tick x. I don't know what the technical term for this is, but this is another way of writing the derivative of the function f is 2x. So the chat is telling me that the proper term is not tick for this, but it's uh, f prime. But I could also say, like what I've done here with y, I could say the derivative of the function is dy over dx. And in this case, the reason why this is important is because what if I want to look at how z changes only relative to x or only relative to y? This is what's known as a partial derivative. And the notation is written instead of, I'm going to just do this over here, right? This would be kind of the regular way of writing a I don't know, full derivative. It's not partial, dy over dx. A partial derivative is written with a d, but in a slightly different style, like this. I, I don't know where this notation comes from. Maybe somebody in the chat can tell me, and then I can say it in a second or put a link to it. But if I want to know how z changes relative to x only, that's a partial derivative, or how z changes relative to y only. Okay, so, sorry, I've, I've, I kind of drew this out of frame, so let me... Uh, let me draw this a bit smaller. So partial derivative of z uh, relative to x, partial derivative am I in the frame, I can't really see, of z uh, relative to y. Did I keep that in the frame? I think I did. Okay, so how do we do this? The way that we do this, this partial derivative, is calculated with the power rule. The same exact way that you would do normally and with treating y simply as a constant. So whatever you would do to a constant, you would, do, you, would, uh, you would do it the exact same way. So what do I mean by that? So this would now equal, this partial derivative would be, so this, like, this, this little section I can do just with the regular power rule. So 2 times 3 is 6. So 6x, six 2 minus 1 is 1. 6x plus, now this is tricky. So 2xy, well, I want the derivative relative to x. Another way of writing this is 2yx. Now think about this. If I had 5x, the derivative of 5x would just be 5. In this case, 2 times y is a constant. I want to treat as a constant. So the derivative of 2yx, or 2xy, is just 2y. So 6x plus 2y plus, now here's a tricky one, y cubed. You think, oh, well, it's a constant, so it stays as y cubed. But it's not. What if I have just... Uh, a value like, I don't have this anymore, like 5, um, the derivative of that would be 0. So this goes away, and then this is the same thing. This is now the equivalent of 9 times y times x squared. So that is 2 times 9, 18 
times uh, 18 times 18 y x, right? Because it's right. If I just had uh, a constant 9x squared, I would have 18x. So 9y x squared is 18 times y x. So this is now the partial derivative relative to x. I treat y as if it's a constant, and I have this as the derivative. Now, as an exercise, I might say, stop watching this video, pause this video, and try to do the partial derivative of z relative to y. Now, I have no room here on the whiteboard to do it because I've done a terrible job of organizing myself. So I will just put the answer to that in the video's description, <laughs> and you can check it because this is the end. So now we have the pieces. I know that I've skipped a million details. This isn't really a proper, and this isn't a proper anything, frankly, but this isn't a proper calculus lesson. I don't even know what I'm talking about half the time in these videos, but I'm trying to set the stage for at least the terminology and the pieces of the puzzle. So what, when I get into the next video, I'm gonna go back to gradient descent, this thing where I calculated the error and then nudged the slope or the y-intercept of this formula for a line according to that error. Well, how, why is it that I did it that way? I'm gonna show you why using the power rule, the chain rule, and partial derivatives. So hopefully this will give you some background for that. I'm gonna do that in the next video. You know, you, don't, you could just go do something else. Like, uh, but um, that's what I'm gonna do. So uh, let me know your answer to the partial derivative here, and then I will see you maybe in the next video. Goodbye!